Oh my god. Get out of the way, light. Okay, so. I'm trying to make a video. My lamp's broken. I know everything about animals, but I can't fix a lamp. Just get out of the shot! My little brother's gonna be mad if he sees this video because in another one of my videos, like a really old video, I had a shirt like this on and it... It's a shirt! You know there's nothing wrong with it. It's low, like there's no straps. Last time I wore a shirt like this in my videos, I was talking about going to Disney World and all that fun stuff. And I had a shirt like this and my brother my little brother was watching my videos the other day and he got so mad. He's like, why are you naked in one of your videos? Don't be naked on the internet. And anyway, he thought I was naked. So Lil Bro, if you're watching this, I got clothes. Anyway. Oh my God. I hate my lamp. Maybe now I can get to the point of this video. Cause there is a point to it. You're not gonna just watch me mess with the lamp and tell people I'm not naked. Actually, okay, so super exciting news. We gotta, we gotta take it back. We gotta take it back a few videos. A lot of videos. There was a video that I made a while back that, you know, interested some people because the title of it was that my frog's butt fell out. That happened. I never really updated y'all on that story yet. Um, basically, Jupiter died. Backstory, if y'all did not watch my first video about my frog's butt falling out, don't watch it. The quality's terrible. I'll just catch you up right here. I bought a frog. It was sick the day I bought it. It was a Pac-Man frog. He was super cute. He was albino. He kind of looked like Donald Trump and his butt fell out. He was overfed at the pet store before I bought him. And so when I brought him home, he had a prolapsed rectum, fell out, and he died after about two weeks. I took him to the vet, you know, paid... 200 something dollars to get his butt fixed, or maybe it was 100, I don't know. I paid money, I paid good money to fix a frog's butt because that's not, I'm not even saying that's bad. I'm not even saying that's bad, okay? Always fix a butt when you can. I spent a lot of money just to watch him die. And the store didn't give me my money back for, uh, like, reimburse me for paying for this frog surgery. They did give me the money back for the frog, though. So, all in all, I got 20 bucks back, but lost, like, nearly 200, so. That was fun. After he died, I was terrified to ever buy another Pac-Man frog. Right when he died, I was like, I want to go get another one right now. And then I was like, no, I can't do it. I was so scared that if I got another one, I was going to kill it. I knew in my heart that he was sick when I bought him. I knew it had nothing to do with me, but I was still scared. I did not want to see it happen again. I was not about to go buy another frog just to watch it starve itself for over two weeks and then die. I went to a reptile expo this last weekend and yeah I could not resist when I saw Pac-Man frogs I just I bought one immediately there was multiple stations throughout the whole reptile expo that had Pac-Man frogs for sale but the first Pac-Man frog I saw at the very first station I went to was the chosen one I was just like I don't care there might be a freaking rainbow one over there but I want this one and I bought him. I haven't named him yet and I have been asking for name suggestions but as y'all know but butts play a huge role in my Pac-Man frog history. So my little brother came up with the name Butty, like Buddy, but Buddy. And then the rest of the lovely internet came up with Uranus because you know, Jupiter and then Uranus, anus. Uranus, not naming my frog after the anus planet. I'm just not, I can't do it. As funny as it would be, my frog's entire life, which could be 15 or more years, would be a running joke about an anus can't do it. Um, let me show you him. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce y'all to my nameless Pac-Man frog. Okay, here is my new friend. Nope. Nope. Anytime, camera. Anytime. My camera does not want to focus. Here is my new Pac-Man frog. He has no name yet, but he is eating, and that says a lot more than what my last frog did. He didn't eat once the whole time I had him. So if you're wondering if a Pac-Man frog makes a good pet, the answer is it depends. Do you want a pet that you can't touch, you can't hold, and that utterly does nothing and sleeps in the dirt all day? If you answered yes, the Pac-Man frog is the right pet for you. But come on, I mean, they literally are just like a giant mouth. How can you... Look at, look at his body. Okay, no, you did, did you just jump onto my bed? No. And you're not really, you don't want to hold them because they breathe through their skin. So if you hold them, they're going to breathe in the oils on your skin. So you can only do it for very limited times. But if y'all have any ideas 
for uh, helping me name this fatty. Please give me any hints. I don't know where he's trying to go right now. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put him away because this is probably stressing him out and that's the last thing I want, so. Okay, gonna go put him away. Come here, baby. So that is my Pac-Man, my nameless Pac-Man who is not going to be named Uranus, okay? You can bribe me all you want, but I'm not naming him Uranus. Or Butty, thank you very much, little brother. Another thing I got at the Reptile Expo was a praying mantis. I have a pet praying mantis now. I love every single one of my animals so much. I love him just as much as every single other pet in this room, but I am obsessed with him right now. He's a baby praying mantis, and he eats off of my finger. Like, if, did y'all see that video I posted? The last video I posted? Watch, watch the video. Watch that right there. He'll sit on my, like, fingernail with his little hands, and he'll just reach out and grab, and he, like, he eats like a human. And he gets to fly and he like nibbles it and turns it and all this stuff. It's like he's eating corn on the cob. So I'm gonna show you him real quick, even though you probably already saw him in my other video. He doesn't have a name either yet because I don't know what to name a praying mantis. I'm not good with names. Like everyone always says that I pick such good names for my animals, but y'all don't realize how long it takes for me to come up with them. The only ones that were easy were I named Kiara before I even purchased her. I like pointed at her and I was like, if we get that dog, that's gonna be Kiara. And I did that because I already had Kovu, and Kovu and Kiara from the Lion King Dos. Which, yeah, there's a Lion King too. I don't know how some people don't know that. It's like the greatest sequel ever in existence of sequels. I have Kovu at home, so you are Kiara. And then, of course, my very first hedgehog was Nala, so Kovu came easy. Never had a Simba yet. I feel like that one's like a really overused name for everything. So unless I find the perfect thing for Simba, I just don't have a Simba. I'll do a whole praying mantis care video and a whole Pac-Man care video. So y'all will know how to take care of both of the babies that I have now. I love them so much. But yes, let me show y'all my praying mantis. Do y'all see how tiny that is? He's a precious little tiny creature who I love so much. He's gonna grow a lot bigger than this, just so y'all know. He's not stuck at teeny tiny level for life. This is baby mantis. I'm always afraid that if I blink, I'm gonna lose him. So, let's put him back in his enclosure. This is his enclosure right now. It's literally a cup with some fake flowers to replicate his environment, and he eats fruit flies. I'll also put in this video my tour of the reptile expo I went to. I do wanna talk about something real quick, though. I do have mixed opinions about reptile expos. They do kind of make me sad. When I go there, I find myself going like, oh no, I don't wanna see that, oh and things like that, but more genuine than that. The way it works is when you're trying to sell hundreds of animals, but you're having to bring them to another place, you bring them in very small containers, especially reptiles. I mean, they're easily transported in cups and, you know, tiny little things. So that's how they do it for reptile expos. So you see a lot of animals stuck in containers that they cannot move in for long periods of time. Why I choose to get some animals from expos is because I am dealing with hands-on breeders. I am dealing with the person who bred the animal itself when I go to reptile shows 99% of the time. I'm not going to a chain pet store where the animals are just shipped to them and you don't know where the heck they came from and what their living conditions were before they came and all that stuff. They come from, most most of the time at Reptile Expos, this is the person's life. They have reptile rooms in their house just specifically for breeding. They do everything themselves most of the time. I like this because most of the time it's the most natural approach. Crested geckos have babies and then they come and they sell the babies. It's not, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of crested geckos being kept at a facility, not being taken care of, and the living ones get shipped off to pet stores. Like, I feel like I have more control over what animal I'm getting. I feel a little more safer. I feel like it's a little bit, it's more, I feel like it's safer for the animal too. I could already see people saying, like, how could you go to a reptile show if you think you love animals? You know, it's cruel. I don't like that the animals sit in the little cages for a few hours, but that is the worst of it. There's nothing other than exactly what you see going on.
Just what I came here for. Just what I wanted. So yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed. I'm gonna make another video probably tonight, but I'm probably not gonna upload it till like the next day to give y'all some time. Cause I don't wanna be like, here's a video. And then while you're still watching that video, I'm like, here's my next video. So thank you for watching and um, comment, rate, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Um, I don't know what this is. I was like trying to point and talk and it just kind of started getting really close to my face. I have a bunch of videos planned. I have some on hedgehogs, I have seahorses, um, how to build and start a saltwater tank. Like I'm going to be building a saltwater tank with you guys and a freshwater planted tank. I'm going to start from scratch and show y'all guys how to build one. And when I say build, I don't mean the actual, you know, acrylic or glass and, and like siliconing it and all that stuff. No, I just mean how to construct the tank and make it a good tank. I'm going to go edit this video or film my second video or I have a bunch of maintenance I need to do. I don't know what order I'm doing things in but I'm going to try to get it all out there. Um, thank you. Bye. Bye.